Today we'll continue talking about the microscopic um, aspects of piezoelectric materials. We mentioned that piezoelectric materials are polar. Some can be non-ferroelectric. Non Some are ferroelectric. Within the ferroelectric materials we have uh, we have domains and these and ferroelectric materials they can they can come in two types single crystal and polycrystalline uh, regarding ceramics then we can also have um, polymers polymer piezoelectric materials but we're not concerning ourselves with those just yet so I wanted to go over domain wall motion and what are the things which allow it to happen or encourage domain wall motion and what stops it so if we look at a piezoelectric material um, and the way it's made is part in part of the processing we heat it to a high temperature and when you heat it to the high temperature what happens is that oxygen comes out and when oxygen comes out of the material we get what is called uh, oxygen vacancies so oxygen is normally a 2 minus but when oxygen leaves its normal site and leaves out of the uh, material it leaves behind a 2 plus okay so now in this material we have these little oxygen vacancies and because uh, in, in a material the distance between oxygens for example in lead zirconate titanate or perhaps even in barium titanate the distance between the oxygens that's a three this is the distance between the oxygens are very small so it's about three angstroms or less therefore they can hop there's hopping going on atoms can actually move within the material so if we have a string of string of uh, oxygens and we have oxygen vacancy at red they can these atoms can move this one can go there then it can move there then this one can move here and basically we can end up with a different uh, organization of the atoms so all these oxygens these technically all moved over one and this oxygen this vacancy moved all the way to the end right here so oxygen hopping can happen so what does that have to do with uh, domain wall motion and domain wall stability so if let's say we have this polarization case and we know that uh, the uh, polarization is from negative to positive so these are the spontaneous polarization of these different domain walls this domain wall between these two different domains and this is not a favorable organization because we have these positives right next to each other so I mentioned that oxygens were negative and vacancies, oxygen vacancy were positive. So what do you think is going to happen if there's an oxygen, let's say there's oxygen vacancy over here, and there's let's say an oxygen somewhere over here, and there's all this junk in the middle. We're not worrying about that. So this is a, uh, this is what's normally there, two plus, or sorry, two minus, or and uh, l let's call this the oxygen vacancy that's near the boundary. So this is the two plus, and this is the two minus. So basically what's going to happen is that this oxygen is going to come here and this one's going to leave and thereby it'll stabilize the electrostatic uh, conditions of the material. Therefore the domain walls will not move. And they will not move because the electrostatic conditions which normally would allow them to have a little bit instability that they want to go one way or they want to grow that kind of instability won't be there because electrostatics will be compensated for and we can further encourage this in the material so we have this we have these oxygen vacancies which cause the, the material properties to stabilize uh, and we can further encourage the stabilization stabilization but it means lower compliance lower permittivity and lower piezoelectric deconstant um, this is what the vacancies cause specifically oxygen vacancies so if we wanted to encourage this we would do what we call acceptor doping when we were making the ceramic we would mix in a little bit of a different type of material 
uh, and this type of material it would substitute for one of the atoms and it would create oxygen vacancies so let's take the example of barium titanate so basically what this uh, iron atom would do if we added iron which is going to be a 3 plus in the 3 plus case it's going to substitute for titanium because of the size and the similar charge electrostatics and this is plus 4 so basically in this atom we have uh, a barium in a barium hole an, an empty a barium vacancy is a 2 minus this is not the real uh, notation for this excuse me but you'll understand um, so this is a titanium 4 plus but we don't we're not talking about titanium 4 plus we're talking about fi uh, iron but we have normally in the crystal structure we have a titanium so we have a titanium 4 minus because that's the empty spot and by filling the empty spot you get the electrostatic charge balance that you normally would have in a correct complete material but now we have this iron in here and the oxygen obviously fills the oxygen site properly so when this uh, when this uh, 3 plus goes in this TI 4 minus area because this is the vacancy we end up having a minus 1 we end up having a minus and how do we deal with minuses I mentioned that oxygen is 2 minus oxygen is 2 minus but an oxygen vacancy is 2 plus so basically what happens is that this encourages further oxygen vacancies to be formed to, to compensate the electrostatics. So now when we make this material, if we add a little bit of iron in it, not much, like 1%, a little bit less than that even of the weight. Uh, so, no, so the oxygen wants the more wants to come out because uh, it wants to stabilize this condition. Therefore, using acceptor doping, we create movable charges. This is the key of movable charges, and this these movable charges stabilize. And this is definitely a very important point to remember about microscopic interactions in piezoelectric materials. Next, we're going to talk about, okay, now we, we destroyed the piezoelectric material properties by adding more and more junk in there to stabilize the domain wall. Now we're going to add some more junk and we're going to call it a scientific term donor doping and we're going to get those properties back we're going to kick those oxygen vacancies out or we're going to render them useless to stopping or pinning pinning so acceptor doping acceptor doping leads to pinning i.e. not moving i.e. stabilization So donor doping, on the other hand, it compensates for the uh, for the charge. Compensates for the oxygen vacancies. Those two plus oxygen vacancies it compensates for those. So, for example, we have again barium titanate. I mean, we're going to leave these alone for now. Uh, so, but we're going to have a let's say niobium will be a di donor doping. So niobium would be five plus. Well, what would we get in the end? Well, we actually we actually started with a barium empty empty place. So then we'd get out of there. We'd get a three plus charge. Niobium would go in barium, and we get a three plus charge. And to maintain the electrostatic charge balance, approximately two bariums would be kicked out for every niobium put in. So basically, we're going to be having some barium empty sites hanging around. Because after all the charge balance, and these barium empty sites, they can't move. And they're already adding an, a, a negative charge in the system. And therefore, when we heat the material, and I believe this is true, the oxygens don't want to leave. Because when the oxygens leave, well actually, they're, they're going to cause a positive charge. And the positive charge... So let me explain this first. These barium empty sites, they don't want to move around because they're big. The oxygen empty sites, small. Barium empty sites, big. So they don't want to move. So they're not going to cause, uh, they're not going to do acceptor doping type stuff where it's going to pin the domain wall, move the charges around to stabilize the domain wall. It's not going to do anything like that. But what it's going to do 
what it's going to do is it compensates for those um, you know for those oxygen vacancies we can just write O 2 plus so these are going to compensate each other uh, therefore they won't want to move around they're going to be attracted to each other because this cannot move because it's too big because the atom size was big originally but when the atoms are close together they can move so this cannot move therefore these oxygens will also be attracted to this for, for charge stabilization and therefore they will also not move and thus the oxygens will be sta this oxygen movement will be stabilized and it will the oxygens will not stabilize the domain walls because they don't want to move anymore those vacancies so in summary uh, we have two types of doping acceptor doping and donor doping normally in the material we have and the acceptor doping is has ox creates oxygen vacancies and this stabilizes domain walls stabilizes domain wall electrostatics So this decreases the properties. All right, piezoelectric D constant lower. But it also decreases the friction, which I'll just call F right now, also decreases the friction, so we kind of want it. Normally, the material is an acceptor type of doping because of the oxygen vacancies normally created uh, during the high temperature processing. But if we want to create better piezoelectric materials, um, we create um, a different type of vacancy, so vacancy of the corner atom this will be something like a 2 minus 1 and these 2 minuses will be compensa will compensate the oxygen vacancies of 2 plus and since these will compensate each other uh, therefore, it's called a donor. We're donating these electrons of off the other material, kind of in the minus plus thing, uh, where we have the deficiencies created. And this deficiency compensate another deficiency extra electrostatically. And this cannot move. Very important. And because this vacancy cannot move, uh, this vacancy kind of attracts these ones, and these these uh, oxygen vacancies kind of get stuck with him. Uh, so because these oxygen vacancies get stuck, um, we can now move these domain walls and there's no stabilization. So move domain walls, move domain walls. And when we say moving domains, we don't mean actually the, the domains are themselves are moving. We mean the wall, the interface, so they're kind of growing into each other. So as if we had a domain here, and let's say a domain here, what's going to start to happen is that this one is going to start to grow bigger. So we're going to get, and this one will start to grow smaller based on the electric field or the stress applied due to the energy sort of instability that one wants to dominate over the other. When we had an electric field or a stress, they kind of uh, fight, fight it out and one grows and the other shrinks based on the stability uh, requirements of the system. Thanks for watching. Next we'll be talking about losses in the le next lecture. And uh, I kind of went to this discussion actually only to introduce the fact that there is something called friction. It's not really called friction, it's actually called loss in a piezoelectric material that we don't that we lose energy and the material heats up because the energy is being lost and I wanted to introduce a little bit of the microscopic origin of that loss or which is domain walls uh, and why they move why they don't move and we'll, we'll discuss uh, a little bit more about them in the next lecture with some analytical discussion about losses. Thanks for watching.